Uh, hi everyone, here's a look at SPA in the ProMazda, an in-depth guide. Now when you're setting up your lap, you want to make sure you're just careful into this corner. You don't really want to push it as the drive off the corner is most important. So yeah, just get a good drive to start up your run because it, you carry that speed all down the Camel Straight. Now it's flat down through here. Now going into a Rouge, you, although the car will do it flat through here in basically any configuration, you want to make sure you're really minimizing your input. So go up on this bottom curb, then bring it back into this top curb, just barely using the throttle. Then kind of get off the turn a little bit and let it go straight flat and over that inside um, curbing there. If you, carry too, if you go too deep in there, you get an off track, but if you get it just right, you really shave very minimal speed. Okay, now coming up into here, the trick to this track and what you do as you get more and more experienced is very minimal inputs. It's quite unique in that a lot of the turn-in zones, especially in the high-speed corners, come off the fairly hard braking areas. So how you apply the brake into the braking zone will really determine how quick you can go through the corner. If you put too much nosedive in the car and you either induce understeer or unsettle the rear, then it's going to cost you into that corner. And because most of the corners are complexes of corners, it can actually cost you, you know, for the next 20 seconds of the track as you're constantly fighting the car to get back on line. So it's really important to get minimal inputs and just be smooth, particularly with how little downforce this car's running. I see a lot of people, like, really aggressively attacking the braking zones in this track, and it just does not work in this car. So you're, you're applying the brakes to take it off and let them off fairly early, although you are trail braking a little bit. You need to just smoothly bring the car into the first apex, cut back and get the front left up on this inside curb, but not too much that unsettles it. That's pretty well the exact amount of track you want to take. You want to bring it back left, but you can never get it quite fully left, but bring it back three quarters across the track to set up a straight line for this next corner. Keep the inside curb and push it out, but not out too wide as there's an off-track waiting for you. And once you get experience doing that, it'll all come together really smoothly, particularly the inputs and the braking zone. It almost looks slow and like you're not pushing because you're just gliding the car through the apexes through there. Now again here, um, quite smooth on downshift, you want to go down the third, you want to bring the car into a fairly early apex. What you don't want to do is brake deep and then cut around to a late apex, I find that loses a lot of time and some people do do it, but I find it's easier if you brake a bit earlier and kind of carry the nose down into the apex, but especially while you're still braking. I'm, there's quite a lot of steering input and brake overlap here, it's at quite an advanced steering angle when the brake is still on. So down the third, and that will bring it into the inside apex. And just wait. You're waiting. You don't want to get in the throttle too early because it'll push you out wide, and you may have to adjust the throttle again. So the second you can get in the throttle, get it and push the car out completely wide. And then through here, another um, tricky track, tricky corner on this track because of the off-track. Uh, Real-life drivers don't have to worry about this, but because our racing is so aggressive with off-track placement here, you can really lose a lap if you push it too hard. So you want to get out completely wide, bring it in. You kind of want to get the front left up on that inside curb a little bit. And then just on the throttle and push the car out. I don't really like to play chicken with the track limits there. And also, you don't want to get into a habit of pushing there in practice sessions, because you can easily gain, you know, tenths of a second by pushing through there in the practice um, sessions, but then in the race and qualifying, you've just developed those bad habits. When you're practicing here, try and practice within the track and build up to the limit with off, without getting off tracks. You know, practice session times do not matter. Just smooth and controlled through there. The car really wants to kick the back end because of course you're pushing the nose down with the trail braking. And if you lose the back end and you have to correct it, it'll push the car out wide and exit and the whole corner is pretty well gone. So you've really got to keep it smooth through there. Mm -hmm. 
Now in through here, there's no actual braking marker, but you're braking fairly late on this inside curbing. And um, again, just keeping the car fairly flat. You want to put in actually fairly low brake input here. Don't take off too much corner speed and then just throw it into the inside apex and harden the throttle to stick the rear end. And the second he gets the apex, just back to full throttle and it will push the car out. You want to use all the track there and carry as much momentum as you can. Then it, then it will stick easily through the second corner. Now through here, again, a uh, braking zone leading onto a high-speed corner and a high-speed corner complex that has a couple of apexes. So do not unsettle the car on entry into here. You're braking about midway across this left curb. There's no actual braking marker. You're getting fairly hard in the brakes. And you want to get the car in and up on this inside curbing, but not too much, just a fairly, fairly simple first apex. And then bring it back in and get it into the, ins into the second apex. Get the front left up on this curb. Then push the car out, use all the track, but don't go too far out there as there's an off-track waiting for you. It's sometimes hard to make the second apex in this left-hander. If you don't turn in aggressive enough, the car does not want to turn in through there. So coming down through here, you can go down into fourth or third. It kind of depends on um, how you like to do it. Third will unsettle the car a bit on entry, which will mean you lose a bit of initial apex speed, but it drives out a bit better. I tend to just alternate depending on how how I get it into the corner. If you've taken off a bit too much speed, you can go down to third, but if you carry the right amount of apex speed, you can also stay in fourth. See, on this particular lap, I got third, and I actually think it cost me a little bit going down the third here. You want to make sure the front right wheel gets up onto this inside curb, and don't be too aggressive on getting the car out. You may need to be hesitant to make sure you don't lose the lap, because you can sort of play chicken with this outside corner a little bit, but if you're on a good lap, it's probably not worth it. I stayed well clear of the green on this lap. I probably could have pushed another half a car length out wide. And then this next apex is flat. Yeah, not an ideal run. I was a little bit too conservative through there, but it was a good lap, so I didn't want to risk it. Just um, taking the least amount of track distance through here, hugging tight, running out wide to minimise turn. All flat. Now, this is the hardest braking marker on the whole track. Again, it's quite easy to unsettle the car and turn in. You don't want it to be moving around in the rear when you go to um, get to that inside curb there. So I'm using this as the braking marker and braking just before it. There probably are more accurate braking markers here, but I've never found one. I'll just brake kind of off that curb before I get to it. So very hard in the brakes, going down the second and throwing the car in. You want to get it up on this right-hand curbing, then kind of continue to bring it right. You don't want to, you could sort of straight line it and turn it in, but I find it compromises your exit. So I kind of continue to bring it right after that curbing, then cut it back for a hard left and a good drive out of that corner. And use all the track. And here, just do the same. I actually prefer when this is the first corner because this is a very easy corner to get wrong. You want to be braking. I brake between that red marker and the 50. Down the second. Get it into a tight apex. You want to get very close to that inside wall. And then just drive hard out. Use all the track.
That slap. That was a 15-0, which is... I think a pretty solid lap around here. You want to um, maybe a tiny bit extra, but you really have to push the limits around this track. And because the track's so long, you know, two tenths here is um, one tenth at most tracks. Here's a lap in fast motion. 